everybody, this is Laura and Arnie with Crazy Cool Cakes. We're back with an awesome tutorial. Arnie and I have turned our favorite childhood game into cake. Before we start though, we'd like to invite you to check out these other game night treats created by our Dessert Network friends. We've all come up with creative edible ideas to celebrate our favorite games. You can find the playlist underneath our video. This is gonna be fun. We're making an exact replica of the operation game, so we've printed out a picture of the poor patient to the actual size. We'll be rolling out all of our flesh-colored gum paste to about an eighth of an inch thick. Arnie's come up with a very easy way to replicate any image. Yeah, I just take a small pin and poke holes all along the edge. Then I just carefully follow the holes with my blade to cut out the shape. The video is pretty sped up here, but just want to let you know that he does take his time when he's doing this. Now we're moving on to the torso. Again, he's going to trace out the entire image by poking little holes all along the edge. And he's also going to trace out the little tiny slots where the game pieces will go. We'll be cutting those out a little bit later once we've let this dry for a few minutes. Now he's going to carefully cut out this section. This is really lightning fast compared to the amount of time you usually take, huh sweetie? I wish I could work that fast. Then I can get some more b-ball in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you play enough. Now we moved on to the last section and we're going to do the same thing. And not forgetting to also trace the little slots on the legs. If you're interested in the tools and materials we're using, be sure to check out the description box underneath our video. Man, you're good. You know that's right. And now all he has to do is just carefully cut out all of the slots. We're off to a good start. Next, his hair. And for this, we're gonna roll out some beautiful dark brown gum paste and trace it just like before, and then carefully cut it out. We'll be adding a little bit of edible glue to the back of the hair to stick it on the head. As in our photo, we're gonna add a few strands of black hair. So Arnie's rolling out little tiny thin worms of black gum paste and each time he's gonna add a strand, he just adds a small line of edible glue. He easily trims off any excess with his handheld blade. We'll also be using black gum paste to make the little tiny eyebrows. For this, he's just rolling out little teardrops and then arch them a little bit. Place a little bit of edible glue on the face and then just place them on there. For the eyes, we're making two little white oval shapes and we wanna make sure that they're the right size. Now all we need are two little black pupils and we're gonna glue these to the bottom of the ovals. We're also gonna need two little microscopic white glow dots. Our patient's eyes are lined with black so Arnie again is rolling out little tiny thin black gum paste worms and he's gonna add a little bit of glue all around the white ovals and then carefully add them. As we're working, we're constantly looking at the photo that we printed out to make sure that we're making everything accurately. Now this poor sap is getting his frown. <laughs> poor dude. Once he gets his tongue, his little mouth will be complete. If this dude could yell, what do you think he would sound like, sweetie? Ah! <laughs> Now we're gonna add his little tiny frown lines. These really bring out his expression of pain. For this, we're gonna roll out little tiny thin red worms of gum paste, and each time we're gonna add just a tiny bit of glue to his face and carefully place them on there. For his nose, we're gonna roll out some red gum paste into a fat capsule shape and cut half of it off. How would you describe this shape, sweetie? Simply bulbous. Like a red light bulb. Man, we should've used a real light. Yeah, that would have been cool. The last thing on his face are these little tiny red lines that go in his ears. Now we're going to work on the little slots where the game pieces go. We're going to start with the little metal parts. You know, the ones that you touch and then they go. Yeah, those. So for that, we're going to roll out little tiny thin strips of gray gum paste. And you're going to turn your pieces over. And you're going to add just a little bit of glue around the edge. And carefully shape the little strip to match the shape of the slot. To paint these gray pieces silver, we're gonna mix our favorite silver highlighter dust with a little bit of vodka. We're using a really pointy brush to make sure we don't accidentally paint any of the skin color. Once that's done, we can add little thin patches of red gum paste to the back of each slot. 
There's a lot of little miniature decorations Arnie has to make to decorate the torso and the legs. Like this little Adam's apple, for example. Now he's making a little broken heart. Aww. He's doing this by flattening a little teardrop and then cutting it in half. To make the little wishbone, he's rolling out two little white pieces of gum paste and gluing them together. As he makes these little miniature pieces, Arnie's looking at the photo that we printed out and that's how he knows exactly where they need to be glued. What's this little thing? Uh, that's your funny bone there. That's cute, baby. You're the king of miniatures. The spare ribs are very simple. All he did was roll out three little tiny tubes and glued them together. Just so you know, rarely do we make things and have them come out perfectly the first time. Usually we have to make things a few times before they come out right. Like this butterfly for example. Since we didn't have a little tiny butterfly cutter, I finally suggested he use a little heart cutter. Thank you baby. You're welcome baby. Now he's making the world's tiniest little pencil. This one I think is my favorite. This is for the writer's cramp and it's just too cute. I've heard of writer's cramp, but I wonder what you call it when you get a cramp in your wrist from editing a video so much. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a lot of little steps. You love making miniatures? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. The little metal part will be painted silver and we'll be using black edible marker for the little tiny tip. We're also coloring the butterfly following the design in the picture. For the water on the knee bucket, we're using a light gray gum paste. And here you see him using the blunt end of his blade to make little lines at the top of the bucket. The handle is made of a little thin worm that is trimmed and glued to the top of each side. The little wrench for the wrenched ankle is made almost exactly like the little white bone. The only difference is we're gonna cut out a little square at each end. These last two little pieces are also painted silver. This brownish red gum paste is for the long rubber band that goes in the ankle, ankle bone, bone connected, connected to the, to the knee, knee bone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we're so silly. Here you see Arnie making a little tiny horse for the Charlie horse. How in the world did you figure out how to make this, sweetie? Well, I started by taking the actual measurements of the game piece. Then I proceeded to go ahead and cut and mold and shape. Uh, what am I kidding? I just winged it. <laughs> well, it came out awesome. For the bread basket, we're rolling out some yellow gum paste, and here he's tracing just the yellow area around the slot. After he trims it out again, he's using the blunt end of his blade to score in little tiny lines so it looks like a basket. Immediately after that, he adds a little bit of glue to the back and glues it onto the stomach. The handle is just a little worm flattened and trimmed. The little slices of bread are made the same way. This is obviously wheat bread, my favorite. After trimming them, he glues them on the right side of the basket. Then he shades them in with brown edible marker to look just like the picture. Now all we need is just one little slice of bread. And this is obviously white bread, my favorite. After gluing it onto the stomach, we're gonna outline the edge with brown marker to look just like the picture. Those are all the little pieces that go on the top of the cake. Man, that looks awesome, sweetie. What's next? The tweezers. For this, he's trimmed out two little strips of gray gum paste and he's trimming the ends to make them pointy. Then he shapes each individual strip to look just like the tweezers in the photo, then glues the two ends together. These have to be set off to the side to dry for a little bit. Now we've moved on to the actual game pieces. The first piece was another rubber band. These are all very similar to the little miniatures we've already made. These are a bit simpler because they're all white. Were they a lot easier to make the second time around? Yeah, it did get a little easier. Now that our tweezer parts have had a little time to dry, we can create the handle. We're making a long teardrop shape, then using our medium-sized ball tool to create a round indentation on both ends. We're just adding a little glue on the inside and inserting the tweezers. These are finished off by painting them silver. Que padre se ven. Oh my god, that sounded so Mexican. That means they're looking pretty cool. Now Arnie's tracing out the little electricity bolts. For something this tiny, you only need to poke a little hole on each corner. Then when it comes time to trim, you just cut a straight line from point to point. 
That wasn't so bad. Ay. Now for the dinero. I found some images online and then Arnie went to our local cake supply and had them print them out on edible frosting sheets. We're just carefully trimming them out and then we're gonna roll out gum paste that's pretty close to the color of the money. Simply add a thin layer of edible glue to the back and then just stick them on. Then trim. We're rich! Our game cards are pretty thin and these are 3 inches by 2 inches. We're using a 90 degree angle to make sure they're nice and straight. My turn! I'm using a pencil to draw on the lines around the arms, fingers, toes, and legs. Of course I'm using the picture as my guide. If you find it a little difficult to freehand, you can always trace the lines when you're tracing out the entire body. That'll make it easier. This next part is very fun and simple. I'm just outlining the entire edge, and I'm also going to go over the lines that I drew with my pencil. Just like that. And now I'll do the same for the upper torso. And lastly, his adorable face. I made doctor and specialist game cards on my computer and printed them out. I'm simply cutting them out and then I'm gonna flip it over and with my pencil, I'm going to darken the letters. Then I'll carefully place the paper on top of my card that's already been hardened and I'll go over the letters with my pencil and they'll transfer onto the card. Then I'll color the letters with red edible marker. I did the same thing for the specialist card. And as you can see, I only had to do this to one of each card because they're gonna be glued and stacked together. Feel free to glue these however you'd like. They'll look cool no matter how you stack them. For me, dusting color onto our decorations is one of the funnest things ever. Here I'm mixing a pale pink and a light brown to give me just the right shade. I'm simply following the picture that we're using to figure out where I need to add a little bit of shadowing. These are our favorite non-toxic chalks. We like to use these on decorations that will not be eaten. Rather, they'll be kept as keepsakes. If your decorations will be eaten, be sure to use edible chalks. I'm also using my favorite dusting brushes. Remember you can find links to all of our favorite tools and materials in the description box underneath our video. Now all he needs is a little color on his face, and that's it for the dusting. Using black edible marker, I'll draw in all the little arrows and lines on the patient's body. And of course, I'm using our picture as our guide. We also need to write the names of all of the game pieces. This part was pretty fun. Just be sure to use super tiny writing. That was lots of fun. Now we can move on to the actual cake. We baked a delicious lemon cake in a 9 by 13 inch pan and I torted this at 2 inches in height. The board the cake will be iced on is 7.5 by 13. That's the actual size of the inside of an operation game. And I've trimmed this cake just a little bit smaller than the size of the board so that I don't add too much icing. I'll use the edge of my board as my icing guide. After centering my cake on the board, I'll be adding a thin layer of our delicious lemon buttercream. Good job on the icing, sweetie. Thank you, baby. Okay, I'm almost done icing my cake here and leveling everything off. And I'm just going to go over it with the Viva paper towel to make sure it's nice and smooth. Our cake will be displayed on top of a presentation board that we've cut to 16 inches by 21 inches. Our cake will be slightly elevated, so I'm gluing a small foam core board piece right in the center of the larger board. After letting my cake sit in the fridge for a while, I covered it with a thin layer of yellow fondant. And I'll be putting this right back into the fridge while we decorate our board. We're sticking with Operation Game colors, and I think it looks really cool when a board has more than just one color. For this first section, I've rolled out some yellow fondant and I'm only going to cover about a third of my board. I'm going to cut the fondant at an angle and cut around the small board that's in the center. Then I'll trim everything else away so my edge is nice and neat. The middle of our board is going to be a nice bright red. I'm going to set this down at the same angle as our yellow fondant and I want it to just slightly overlap the yellow edge. I run my finger over the edge so I can see where the fondant is underneath. Then I just carefully trim away the excess using my handheld blade and pizza cutter. On the other side of the red fondant, I'll make a long cut at the same angle. Then I'll clean up this section. We'll finish off our board by covering the rest in yellow fondant. 
If covering boards in fondant is something new to you, be sure to check out our tutorial on how we cover our boards in fondant. If you have a tiny gap left between your colors, just push them together using your fondant smoother. My cake halfway around is 23 inches long. To create the sides of the operation game, I'm rolling out a long, thick tube of red fondant that is slightly longer than the 23 inches to go halfway around. I'm gonna have to cover the sides of the cake in halves because there's just no way in the world that I can roll out almost a four foot long wall. After straightening out my long piece of fondant, you saw me marking the entire length at two and a half inches in height. This is where I'll make one long straight cut. This wall is only going to be a half an inch taller than the height of the cake. This sticks very easily by just brushing on a little bit of water. I've gone ahead and rolled out my second long piece of red fondant and this one I rolled it out a little bit longer because fondant tends to start shrinking right away. I wanted to make sure that my ends met up. And they certainly did. So with my handheld blade I'm just going to trim off what I don't need, making sure it looks nice and neat. Now the really fun part putting it all together. Yeah. Right now I'm just putting them on there just to make sure everything's gonna fit well. And what do you know, it fits perfectly. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit of royal icing to the back of each piece and gently place it on there. It's so fun when things start to come together so well. With black edible marker and still following our picture as our guide, I'm continuing the little arrows onto the yellow fondant and adding the little pieces that go on the board. These little pieces represent the game pieces that will actually go into the slots. In reality, these are pictures on the board, but as you know, we made them in 3D. After rolling out some red fondant, I'm gonna cut out a circle using a one and a half inch circle cutter. And I'm gonna cut off one third of the circle. This is where the electrical wire comes out of and also where we'll be adding the little electric shocks we made earlier. We want our game to look as much as possible like the real thing, so we're also making these little red peg tops. These are what connect the board to the actual game. Time to pull out my super tiny writing again. Now I'm just adding the names of the other little pieces that we added onto the board. Oops, almost forgot. Finally, with a little bit of glue, I can stick my cake onto our cake presentation board. Thank you, sir. You're quite welcome, my dear. While that dries, I'm going to roll out a long skinny worm of red fondant, then add the tweezers to the top of the game. I'm gluing one end of the wire into the little hole and the other end into the tweezers. Pretty much however you place this lead, it'll look good. I'm carefully sticking it to the board and the game. To make the four corners that'll make our cake look like it's standing, I'm going to roll out some red fondant to about a quarter of an inch in thickness and I'm going to cut out four one quarter inch wide strips. I've cut the ends at an angle and then arched them. That way they fit perfectly underneath the cake and match the shape of the corners. Next I'm going to decorate our board with our game money. I'm just going to add a little bit of royal icing to the back of each bill and then stack them. You can place these however you'd like, but I think stacked looks pretty cool. On the other side of our board, I'll be adding the doctor and specialist game cards. I can't believe we're practically done. Híjole, that was fun. The last thing I'm going to do is just add a dot of royal icing to the back of each game piece and just randomly decorate the board. Wow, it looks like we're done. Here's our finished operation game cake. We hope you like it, everybody. Don't forget to check out all these other sweet game night tutorials from our Dessert Network friends. You can find all the links underneath our video. Thanks for watching, everybody. And if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe. We'd like to invite you to hang out with us in our social media. And we'd love it if you could visit our online shops. You can find all the links underneath our video. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you later.